Hey guys, my name is Mavi and I've spent the last 14 years in the plastic surgery and beauty industry, working alongside top board certified plastic surgeons. In that time, I've helped thousands of women in their surgical journey. My passion to educate and help women feel empowered is what led to what we now know as the Big Butts No Lies podcast. Join in on the fun as I talk to plastic surgery experts, friends, and real life patients about all things plastic surgery. Should be fun. Hey guys, do I have the episode for you today? One of the questions I get asked a lot is, how do I enhance my results? How after a BBL, how can I keep my cake caking? How can I keep that (laughs) booty popping? So this is a very, very exciting episode for me because I have some answers for y'all. I've been searching around the internet far and wide to find the answer. So over on TikTok, you guys know I like to be on over on TikTok. I found Nunzi, the booty king. And if you guys go over to his channel, you'll see hundreds and hundreds of videos with the best booty building workouts. So he is the perfect guest for us to have on today as we discuss what's the best way to maintain the BBL results. Thanks so much for being on the show with us today, Nunzi. This is an honor and dream come true <laughs> to be on the on the on the Big Bus podcast. Like oh right away, gosh. I'm at home here. <laughs> These are my people, and just booties for life. Yeah, no, dude, it's dope. Thank you, Mavi, for having me on here. And uh, I do have some answers, many answers. Good. We have a lot of (laughs) questions. We have a lot of questions. So first, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got started with your channel? How how did you become the Booty King? So basically, I'm Italian descent and I have always had a big dumpy. (laughs) You know, I was like, just grew up with a big dumpy. I remember in high school. You know, I was kind of like on the football team. A lot of people would always come and like want to watch and see. Like, I've always had a big, I've always had a big ass, but uh, I've always had a love for fitness. And I started working out at 14 years old. I fell in love with it because it really, it helped me overcome so many different obstacles I had in my life. And, you know, at that time I was given a lot of different uh, mental health conditions and all this kind of labeling bullshit. But I ended up realizing that when working out, it just changed my confidence and changed my outlook. So I really said, okay, this is, I need to show and help people realize that by taking care of their body and taking care of their mind, they're going to really enhance their life. That, that was always a really big love for me. I actually was an actor for a few years out of high school and I lived in LA and then I ended up moving to Vancouver where I became a personal trainer. And then through there, just like continued my fitness sort of journey. I also went through a huge weight loss transformation. I was actually 100 pounds overweight and ended up losing that. So I've, I've been around, like I've done a lot. So I ended up actually opening up my own gym in Vancouver, where I'm from in Canada here. That's when I started sort of getting into social media. I was always had a love for the camera, obviously being an actor and started playing around on you know Instagram at that time. And then when the pandemic hit, you know, everyone's lives changed, right? So at that point, our gym got shut down and I downloaded TikTok and started getting into creating all these TikToks and we went viral. And it actually was funny because when I started my fitness TikTok, I did all around fitness. You know, I do chest videos, arm videos, and then I do booty videos. And my booty videos would go viral. They would just take off. So I was like, okay, obviously there is sort of a want for booty videos. And I started just dedicating my content to being glute focused, let alone that I start to realize how much of an impact it had on my life and how much I loved training the glutes. Because I've always loved training my legs. Like, even in high school, you know, I'd always wear the shortest shorts to high, you know, to my school. And like, you know, I was always repping my legs. And I was always getting made fun of that. But I always was true to myself, my authentic nature, and loved to rep my big booty and my big legs. <laughs> but anyway, so when I started my TikTok and started making all this booty content, like that's one of the things I, I, you know, one of the big things I've realized, Mavi, as a trainer specifically as well, is so many people deal with like back pain, knee pain, and there's such an importance to training the glutes. All these pains are due to the fact that we have really weak glutes because the silent cancer in our world is sitting. These sedentary lifestyles are literally is what making our pancakes because some of the first rules, ladies and gentlemen, to building muscle is activation. So really understanding how to activate your muscles and particularly the glutes 
are extremely hard to activate because we sit so much. So that is sort of the first step. And even in today, when we get into more questions about how to keep you know, your BBL looking cakey, as you say, I love that, <laughs> is really understanding glute activation. And that's where the foundation of my work really begins, is understanding how to pop the booty, engage the glutes. You know, the glutes are a very tough muscle to engage. And yeah, you know what, Bobby? Like, I just had a lot of fun. Like, I, I just like, I wake up every day. I'm so grateful for my life to be alive. I'm grateful for all the opportunities in my life. And, you know, the universe, God has given me some assets, winky face, you know, like, so, <laughs> you know, I use my assets to buy, uh, you know, ability. And, you know, I've been able to probably say, like, I've, I've put on, like, I think in the last two years, because I've really picked up my booty training, like I've mastered the craft of booty training and the art of it. And I've probably put on about six inches. Like I, I'm around a 47 inch peach right now. Which Dang. is, uh, you know, I yeah, think that's what pretty, I pretty, think pretty, that's, pretty, that's pretty big. That's what some, that's, that's that's big, what some of that's our big, BBLs yeah. are. That's what the, that's I mean, what it, some of our <laughs> BBLs are. Yeah. Like I've always said, like if you can get in the 40 inch club, that's a big win. Right. So yeah, you know, and it's, it's also like, you know, I've always said there's actually two ways to uh, grow the booty. You know, there's growing the booty itself. And then there's also shrinking waist. And that's something I, I, I've always held too as well is like keeping my waist tight. So, you know, you have the, the illusions, right, of a, an hourglass figure. So, okay. So now, now that I got you yeah. on the line, let's ask you some questions. How do I do that? How do you do the muscle activation? How do you... Yeah. How do you grow a booty? Yeah. Okay. So muscle activation, it's like this. It's like, this is a good metaphor from what I'm doing right now. It's like, for example, I'm learning how to dance. So I'm actually learning right now because I'm so new to dance, how to just move my body, right? I'm learning how to move the body before I actually learn like dance moves. So that's the same thing with working out. And that's the really big fundamental step that people miss is they go right to the dance moves. So they go right to the exercise, right? And you see a lot of people just do squatting and deadlifting and lunging and they don't get the results they want because they, they miss the step of how to activate the booty. What we have to do is to learn glute isolation exercises. So when we do things like squats and deadlifts and even lunges or single leg deadlifts, these are compound movements. So these are actually engaging a lot of our quads, our hamstrings, um, core. So there's a lot of other muscles working. And that's why those aren't the best exercises to do for glute isolation. So what you really want to focus on, and there is tons of this on my TikTok feed. Like, it's all this. Like, you'll see so much glue activation stuff. But the kickback is one of my favorites. So you can even do it, for example, if you're listening, if you're listening right now, hopefully you are, you do it standing up or you can do it on all fours. And I'm going to do it. I still, have my microphone in my hand. I'm going to do it while I'm... While okay, I'm yeah, do it right now. Do it. Okay. Okay. So basically, Bobby, I want you to stand on one leg. Okay. So standing on one leg, you can already feel your glute engage on the leg it's standing, right? Because the glutes are the brakes of the body. So even standing on one leg will teach your glute how to engage. But anyway, that's actually not the working leg. So the working leg is the leg that's off the ground. And what I want you to do is I want you to slightly turn your foot out. And I want you to basically keep your legs super straight. And I want you to pull your leg back to about uh, 4 o'clock like about 45 degrees. So not straight back, not out to the side, but just straight on that angle. And I really want you to keep that foot angled in actually. So angled, you can do angled in or angled out. It's going to work different parts of the mead, but whatever is going to make you have a really good contraction. Can you feel that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. So yeah, even right now, it. maybe try, try this for a sec. So you're on that one leg. So kick back and just hold it. Like really hold it, keep your chest up, don't bend over too much, and just see how far back you can squeeze that glute. And you should be able to squeeze it really hard. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. So even if you just did like 20 reps of that, you'll shake it out and you'll feel your peach will be a lot more pumped. Just with that. So, <laughs> just with that, right? I think it's important to educate everyone as well. There are basically three muscles in the glute. The big muscle is glute max. So the glute max is kind of like, it's the under part. So it's the big part. It's what's going to make your peach look very big. Like, you know, big booties. Projection? Big glute max. Is that what's going to give the projection? So yeah, so that will give the projection. 
the mead, so the glute mead is the shell. And that's what, I, there's a famous like picture. I've always referenced Kim Kardashian. So she balances a wine glass on her booty, but it's the shelf of the booty. So it's the mead. And it's the glute mead that's going to really give it that round, popping sort of shape. Right? So a lot of, I, I've trained a lot of girls who have very, like most people have very overdeveloped maxes because the glute max is going to engage more easily because it's a bigger muscle. I'm just going to like, so glute max is always hit in your compound movements. So your squats, your deadlifts, your lunges, those are going to be a lot of glute max focus. The glute need, which to me is the gem of the glutes and what will really and I think that's really, you know, I actually really think that's important for uh, anyone getting a BBL surgery because I feel like once you get the BBL, there's gonna, it's going to be really important that you keep your butt perky because you don't want it to let it sag and hang too much. So that's where the glute mead is the shelf will be really important to build out, to round out that peach. And how you hit the glute mead it's a lot of glute isolation. So that kickback, you know, remember that kickback we just did? Uh-huh. So that's a glute meat exercise, Ooh, right? Okay. So, I'm writing uh, all this so, down. <laughs> yeah, write it down. So another really good tip here, Mavi, I want you to try this for a sec. Actually do this. So stand up again. Okay. Get in that same position we were in, same position, where you're standing on one leg, you're, you're, you're straight up. You don't want to bend over too much. But this time, I want you to take your thumb and I want you to just drive it into the glute meat, which is the top of the butt. So drive your thumb into that and now perform the kickback and feel that muscle engage. You feel that glute yeah. mead engage as yeah. you kick back? Yeah. So by digging your thumb into the muscle, that's going to really help as well. So you can do that exact same exercise, which is a glute kickback on a cable machine. So if you do follow Nunzi or the Booty King, you'll notice that I do a lot. Like I've mastered the art, Navi, of the cable kickback because the cable kickback is no doubt the best exercise you can do. It's my secret weapon. I really, I credit my peach to getting huge from this exercise this and really mastering it. This is what I wanted to know. This is exactly what yeah, I wanted to so know. This is it. So, <laughs> so give me your top workouts for my girls who are looking to look slim, thick, slim in the waist, thicker in the hips, and they don't want to look very masculine. That's what, that's one of the things that I hear from women who tell me, Oh, I don't, I don't work out too hard because I don't want to look like a man. I don't want my arms to get big. I don't want my legs to look too big. So tell me some exercises that will tone, but not make you look so muscular. So, so like manly. <laughs> the best exercise to slim the waist is hands down the ab vacuum that controls the transverse abdominis which is main focus there is to keep the waist tight. That is like using planking or side planking uses your transverse dominus as well. And these are all exercises to reduce and slim the waist without working the abs itself, like crunches or sit-ups or leg raises, which focus on the rectus abdominus that will actually build out the ab muscles. So if your goal is to slim the waist, you want to work on your planking, your ab vacuums, and learn to have the belly button to spine mental cue to keep that waist looking nice and tight. Hands down, the best booty pumping exercises you can do right at home are the straight leg kickbacks, donkey kicks, side kickouts, and fire hydrants. Those are the main glute activation exercises that can be done anywhere at any time. The kickback is a straight leg where you, you angle out at 45 degrees to engage the glute mead, the donkey kick is where you bend the knee and kick the heel to ceiling. The side kick out is raising your leg directly out to the side. And the fire hydrant is the same motion. However, your knee is bent. Those four exercises work the glute max and glute mead and will get a great peach pump anywhere at your home, at your office. There's no excuse to get that booty looking thick. For toned arms, you want to work on triceps and bicep exercises. If you're at a gym, the tricep rope extension is awesome. Same with a basic bicep curl. You're just going to want to avoid lifting really heavy weights. Keep your repetitions super high, 20 to 30 reps plus. Kickbacks are awesome at home. Tricep dips are another great exercise you can do at home. Like I said, 
any more body weight exercises will really tone and firm the arms instead of lifting heavier weights, which will add mass to the arms. So if you're looking at getting nice toned arms, think about diamond push-ups, tricep dips, very light curls, tricep extensions and kickbacks, and that will get the arms nice and toned and without too much mass or size. So in terms of a leg workout, I think the best thing that you can do is, um, you know, start with some kind of squat. A sumo based squat is going to be more ideal for glutes, which are feet wide angled out 45 degrees. I like five sets, about 20 reps. I would move in then to a Bulgarian split squat, which is like an elevated lunge and then into single leg deadlifts. So some isolation movements there. I like three sets of 20 reps for those. I'll hit some hip lifts, dumbbell hip lifts. That's a fantastic exercise using a bench to really focus on the glutes and hamstrings. I like three sets of 20 there. And then I'll finish off with the glute isolation. So my kickbacks, donkey kicks on a cable stack. I like to do about four sets of 15 to 20 reps. And then I might finish off the workout with a glute hyperextension. I'll bang out 50 reps there. And then if I have time, I'll hit my calf raises about 50 reps on the seated or standing. That's a complete leg day. You know, it's, this is where it okay. So you have to go, like I said, I, I just keep plugging my, my TikTok, but it actually has all of this because... It does. I've been through it. I've been through all of your videos. So I, you're not plugging it. It's just, that's where, the, that's where it is. If you want to see how to oh, do it, 100%. go over there. That's, that's what I'm saying, right? Because I'm going to try explain audio here, the method I use. So basically, picture yourself at the gym and you're by the table stack. Now, the first thing you do is you want to elevate yourself. So I usually grab a plate, like a 45 pound plate or a little stepper. You don't want it to be too high. We're talking about, you know, maybe four to five inches off the ground. So what you would do if you were, if you're standing next to the cable stack, let's say my right side next to the cable stack, you would have your left leg strapped up. So not the leg closest, you'd have the opposite leg strapped up. And then what you would do is you would visualize this. You would step over the cable and then you would step on the plate of the elevation, whatever you have. So now your right leg is on top of the plate elevated. Your left leg is strapped up and you're going to basically mimic that same motion, that movement, Navi, that I just did with you where you're standing doing the kickback. But because of that elevation and because you step over the cable... It just puts the glute meat right at fire. And once you understand how to keep your glutes and hips stable, because that's a really big error in uh, what I watch people train their booties is there's too much hip movement going on. You really have to keep your glutes and hips stable performing these exercises. Because if you move too much, you're going to lose that tension. And the tension is very important. It is everything. So how? It is everything. So go into that. So it comes back to muscle activation. So that, that is how we grow and build muscle. When most people go to the gym and they skip that first step of how to dance or how to move your body, how to engage your muscles and just go to exercises, it's just kind of like they're sitting down and they're like, for example, squatting, just down and up, right? Point A to B. They're not really thinking about the fact that like what we're trying to do when we train is we're trying to engage and stimulate and break down muscle fibers. So for example, a lot of muscles that guys struggle with is upper chest. The upper chest is a really difficult muscle to engage because we're very internally rotated from bones, posture, all that kind of stuff. So in order to hit the, the pec minor, which is the upper chest, you have to learn how to engage it, you have to learn how to activate it. So like, because if you can't do that, like if you can't, if I can't pop my booty, like dude, go and check out, I think it's on TikTok or it's on Instagram. I literally can do a crazy booty pop. Like I can make the booty dance, like up and down, up and down. And that's what you really want to get good at. Like you should be standing in there. And if you start to have your BBL surgery or your BBL like all done, it's healed and stuff. Pop your booty. Like just stand up. Like do it with me right now, man. Stand up for a sec. Hold on. I have a mirror in my <laughs> office. So let me, let okay, me yeah, so get somewhere up. where I can see myself in the mirror. So when you're, when you're standing and ready to go, have your feet like, you know, pretty like in, in shoulder width. So not too wide, pretty tight. And basically just start to just try and pop your glutes, engage your glutes. So how you do that is you have to have your feet planted. And I kind of think about pulling back, but I'm really just popping the booty. So I'll do like five reps on the right, where I'm just trying to connect my mind to my right glute and engage it. And then I'll do five reps on the left. And that's what we're doing. We're starting to build. So now once you're, so I've been popping it. Now I'm going to hold it. 
now I'm going to so squeeze your cheeks together, Mabby, like really hard and just hold it. You feel that? Yeah, I feel that. Yeah, right. So then relax, let the glutes relax and now engage them again. So really squeeze the glutes. So by practicing this, so like basically once you're squeezing your glutes and you feel your booty, right? So remember when I was getting you to dig your thumb into the glute knee kick back there? Mm -hmm. The reason why I do that is because I can feel, if you do it with me right now, again, dig your thumb and do that glute kick back, feel the muscle and try not to let it release. So once you feel it release, that's where you have to stop. And that's your act of working range. Because coming back to your question, if we don't have tension in the muscle, we're not doing anything. And that is why so many people are less disappointed with their results in the gym because they're not actually working out properly. <laughs> they're just in there thinking they're working out, but they're not understanding that there's a deeper connection that you have to have when you train. You know, that's why training is, it's, it's, like, it's, it's a very mind muscle. It requires a focus. You know, right. This yeah. makes so much sense. So yeah. on this, on the cable kickback, how much weight should it have on it? So great question, Maddie. This is a great question. Your muscles do not have eyes and they cannot see the number on the weight. You cannot ego lift. And I always highly, highly, highly recommend you start as light as you can. Keep the tension, feel the booty engage and very slowly, gradually work your way up, especially on something like a cable kickback, which is an isolated movement, very isolated. That is where you're going to do high reps with a lighter weight. Now, don't get me wrong. When you have started to master the exercise, then you have the ability to raise the weight because I actually can go quite heavy on a kickback. However, you run the risk of when you start going heavy on a kickback, your hips rotating. And like I said earlier, that is a no-no and will lose tension on the glute because obviously you're going to have to start to overcompensate for all this weight. You're better off saving heavier weight for things like lunging and squatting and deadlifting, which are compound movements. But I highly recommend, like I said, you start light and perfect the movement. So like, you know, you could do this body weight, right? And then five pounds. I think another really great thing to have if you're at home is doing uh, like ankle weights because you can do ankle weight stuff. And, you know, it's, it's great as well, right? So, yeah, but either way, know. you want to go... I'm writing all this down. Yeah, yeah. Ankle weights are awesome, especially during the pandemic there. Like, you know, you can do a lot of booty activation stuff. Like, booty activation in isolation does not require a lot of weight. Like, I do... A, I go TikTok live every weekend and sometimes throughout the week for a home booty activation workout. And I just do it, like, with my body weight. And I, I'm sweating. Like, my booty is pumped after this, right? Because you're... That's the thing is you're trying to isolate the muscle. So yeah, it's, uh, I, I it's, totally, it's important. I love it. I love it. So, okay. Yeah. I'm going to ask you some of the questions that I get asked the most. For Please. example, for girls who have maybe already had their BBL and they still have some hip dips, how are there any exercises they can do to help build that out or no? Always a yes. But here's the thing. I, you know what? Okay. Because I just got asked this today on my own TikTok on my last video. How to get rid of uh, how the to hip fix dips. A, a hip dip. Right. So can you actually, I, I think I know what it is. Is that where it sort of dips in? That is where the hip ends and the leg starts. And right. And on, it kind of dips in. It dips in. Yeah. Okay. So I know what that is exactly because basically, okay. So the thing is, I cannot deny that some of the booty aesthetics will come down to genetics, right? Like, you know, genetics are going to play a role in the fact that we all have different booty genetics and we all have different ways that our body is built and our bone structure within our hips, right? Like, like you know, but there's a lot that goes into this sort of hip dip. Now, the thing is, is like, you're going to really want to work on that glute need, right? Because the glute need is what's going to give you the pop, Right. So if you're looking at a, if you're looking at a booty from behind and it kind of just goes down and then out like a, like a, like a teardrop, you know, that's like a big booty with not a lot of height. And that's where you see that dip. So what you got to do is you got to lift the butt. You got to, you got to, and that's what I'm saying. That would be my thing. And I don't know, cause I'm, I'm oh, using the BBL as okay, well. Okay. Like, okay. 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 I see what you're saying. You know, like I, I, I feel like, tell me if this is correct. Like, I feel like with the BBL, like, I don't know exactly, but like, 
depending on the size, I could just see gravity doing a thing where it so that it maybe hangs more. Oh yeah. I don't know if they, they stay up because like, because you want to like, and, and that's, there's nothing wrong with an ass that's like fucking juicy and, and hanging. Like, you know what I mean? Like that's like, that's, you know, it's a look. Yeah. It's whatever. a teardrop look. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but I'm just saying, but if you want to give it like, no, I, of course, it, because like, it's like, going, yeah, you need, yeah, you need workouts that, are going to tone the muscles after a BBL. So Dr. Azizi, he's said it uh, multiple times on the show that working out after your BBL only enhances your results. So 100%, these, yes. these workouts, you're saying like, and this is why I brought you on. Okay, well, now we know we need to work out our booty, but let's find out how to work it out to get the best you know projection. And, yes. you know, what, what do we need to do? So that's why you're here. That's why you're on today. <laughs> so and, we, and that's why you I'm honored to be us. here, dude. Big bucks, let's go, dude. Because the thing is, like, right, when you get a BBL, it's really exciting, right? Because you're giving yourself a big level up, but it's not necessarily band-aid. Like, and you can drastically continue to improve your booty by doing the glute isolation workouts I'm talking about. And even if you don't exercise, like, when I was, like, I'm from Vancouver, we have a big sort of, like, you know, scene, you know, people want to look good. Right. So like, I deal with a lot of like girls that would come in and they'd be like, okay, like, you know, and be like, I want to like shrink my waist, grow my booty. And then here was a big one too, not grow my thighs. Like a lot of girls, I think were concerned with the size of the quads because like, that's one kind of like way, like, you know, I got big quads. Right. So if that is your focus, that is like why doing the glute kickbacks, the side kickouts, the donkey kicks, the full leg sweeps, the around the world, all these different exercises, glute bridges that are going to focus only on the glutes. Because when you're doing squats and when you're doing quads and when you're doing like lunges and deadlifts, you're going to be working. And, and it's good to have other muscles. Like I'm not saying as a trainer, I would advise everybody to squat and deadlift and to, you know, lunge and stuff. However, I'm just giving the options for people who don't work out, who are getting the BBL and want to just uh, an easy five to 10 minute maintenance plan. Here, get yourself please. some ankle weights. <laughs> yeah. So just like go grab some ankle weights, you know, keep them in the kitchen or the living room. When you wake up or every day, strap them up and do like a hundred kickbacks per glute, you know, easy, done. Booty's popping, glutes are engaged and you're not even going to the gym sweating. Right. So like, but yeah, at the end of the day, you gotta, you gotta do something with the glute muscles to keep them active because you gotta, you know, it's going to make your BBL look way better. Like you, way better. And if it, and to me, if, it, if you're going to do the BBL, like if you're going to get it done, then like, it's like, you know, it's like why I wore braces. Like when I got my braces off, I just didn't let my teeth go to shit. You know, like right. if anything, I kept extra good care of them. I, I brushed them like three times a day. You know, I got white teeth because I went through getting, you know, I'm sure like, you know, I don't know how the recovery is with it. But it's like uh, it's not like, easy. Yeah. Right. Like it's a big procedure. Right. So it's like one of those things where it's like, you know, when you get it and you've gone through it and you're healed, it's like, let's work hard to make it look outstanding. Yeah. That's what you guys do, man. You guys make butts look outstanding, but you can get it too. Just doing glute isolation. So, yeah. So, you know, with the podcast, what I do is I want my girls to be better patients and part of being a better patient. Me too. I want to be a better patient is taking care of your results. The, the surgeon can only do so much after you're home, you're healed. I mean, I've had girls come back a year later and set, be upset because they look the same, but they did not take care of themselves. They didn't change their eating habits. Yeah. They gained 20 pounds. And now we're here back again where we were. So that's not what yeah. you want to do. You want to, if you're investing $18,000, $25,000, even 15, 10, any money that you're investing into your procedure, yeah. you have to protect and take care of your investment. So part of that is yeah. working out. You have to work out to maintain and protect your investment. 100%, Mavi. You know, I, I think that, like I said, it's just like, it's such a great investment and it's an exciting thing. And, you know, it's, it's a big thing to go, you know, through. That's why you just, you know, use that as a motivation. I think that's a good motivating thing because, yeah, like, you know, it's not a magic fix. You know, I, I've been in this industry a really, really long time. And, you know, being, you know, in front of me, like, I've seen, like, a lot of people, for example, you know, it's like the same thing as, like, getting fat removal or liposuction. It's like, if you're going to, you know, if you get that and then all of a sudden you keep eating like shit, we're not fixing. That's not, that's not going to fix the problem. Or it's like, you know, you, it's, you know, exactly. if you're getting a lot of, 
you know, if you're not treating your skin nicely, you know, and that's where diet and nutrition is really important. Like I'm actually going to be coming out with a really cool book on, it's like early in, in the works of it, but it's going to be basically a booty building Bible. You know, of like, that's what we need because like, that's part of yeah. my questions here. What am I supposed to eat while yeah. I'm working while I'm working my booty out? How? Because I okay. see a lot of so stuff online. Is, yeah, this is a really great question, and I don't know how long we have on this podcast because I could just talk for another like five hours about this subject alone. But <laughs> well, I, we have I, thirty I, minutes, I, thirty more minutes. I will say this. I will say this. So this was always a fun thing where I when I was a trainer because I was a trainer for about nine years, so I, I dealt with a lot of different case studies. And a lot of women would come to me and they'd say, Nunzi, I want to grow my booty and I want to shrink my waist. That was probably the most common thing I heard. Me too. And at the end of the day, to be honest, that is not something that you can actually really do. <laughs> like, because growing muscle, getting bigger, like requires a certain strategy. So if I want to get bigger, and this is like, this is like, dude, this is like, cause I'm a bodybuilder. So like, for example, in bodybuilding, we have bulking phases, seasons, and we have cutting seasons, right? Like you can't get bigger and get leaner at the same time. That doesn't, that doesn't make it you, like, I mean, that just doesn't make sense, right? Like how am I supposed to get bigger and stay leaner, right? So inevitably when you are trying to build, when you're trying to get bigger, the thing is, is like, you will be putting on a little bit of body fat because there's going to be a surplus in calories. You're going to be trading a little bit heavier but you're going to be eating a lot more. Now I say this very, very, you hear this is you can definitely control the amount of fat that you gain in the bulk because I eat very clean. And when I actually am bulking, I'm actually not gaining a lot of fat. I'm actually gaining mostly muscle and mostly water from the higher carb intake and very minimal fat. I'm not saying to go out and eat shitty fast food, processed foods because on a bulk, you can definitely stay tight. I never let myself get fat ever. But when I'm bulking, you know, I'm keeping my food tight and I just look a lot bigger. So right now, for example, I'm about 250 pounds and I'm quite big. And that's why my booty is 47 inches, you know, because I've been able to really get a good bulk where I've been eating really healthy, been training really hard and heavy and consistent. And I've been able to add about three inches to my booty. And I'd say in the last, honestly, like six, five, maybe even four months. Um, you would just like, yeah, really focused training, right? Because what happens is, is once you grow that muscle, then because I'm going to be going to Mexico for the winter, you know, probably around October, November is when I'll start to cut. And that's where you start to kind of just lose the body fat. You're going to bring the calories back, but now you have that built booty under there. So even as you get leaner, the booty is going to start to look even bigger, right? So that is like really important where it's like, I think that, and what's really cool as well is I've seen this trend happening and I love it because I'm a thick boy and <laughs> people love like we're, but we're, we're coming into more of an era where people want to be thicker than shredded and leaner, you know, like it's, yeah. it's, it's sexy. It's I sexy like, to be thick. Like it's, it's sexy to have curves. Yeah. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? I like, so it's like, so embrace that side of it because it's easy to get lean. It's hard to build muscle, but basically in a nutshell, when it comes to nutrition, you know, there's, this is just a, such a big topic, but I'll say this, I'll say this, be very wary of everything you're hearing. We are living in a society where there is so much information and so many opinions. It's like, dude, there's like fucking new diets every day, right? There's like, you have your like carnivore diets, you have your hardcore vegans, there's yeah. fasting, there's, there's six meals a day, there's pescatarian, keto, paleo. I'm like, yo, holy shit. Like, Bro, it's like, and you got to remember, when it comes to nutrition, the golden rule is that your food is all nutrient-based real food. Like, that's the golden rule, right? Like, right. you have to, your, your body needs nutrients. So, your body needs foods. Like, I always say this, it's got to be single-ingredient foods, right? So, apple, banana, spinach, chicken, rice, you know, like, orange. Like, it's one ingredient. Like, this is what it is, <laughs> You know, if you mm. pick up like a package, like pick up a protein bar and read the ingredients, dude. Like, I mean, half of them, I can't even pronounce. Like, yeah, I, like I fucking know. science. You know what I mean? So that is not real, right? So you want to do your best to eat as real food as you can because that is going to be the most amount of nutrients and your body is going to be able to utilize it. When you eat a lot of processed, fake, artificial foods, 
your body doesn't, what's it going to do with that? It's going to either use it as energy if you're having good metabolism or it's going to store as fat. So like when I'm bulking, I am eating about five to 6,000 calories a day, which is a lot, but it's 6,000 calories of nutrient dense food that is helping me get bigger and stronger and leaner. If I was to eat 6,000 calories worth of fast food, you know, restaurant, like whatever, like, like, you know, McDonald's, whatever, you know, like if I was to eat 6,000 calories of like processed fake foods, of cheeseburgers, yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? So that's super important. But I think there's, this is always a really big question because I'm not on here to say there's no right or wrong. Like there's like, the thing is, is when you hear people speak about nutrition, they're going to really say and talk about what's working for them currently. Right. Like if I go talk to a vegan or I go talk to someone who does fasting or I talk to someone who does, you know, a keto based diet, you're going to hear all the great things about it because it's working for them. Right. So the job for you is you have to ask yourself what is going to be sustainable. It's the sustainability and the consistency that will give you the results that you want. And where people go so wrong in this, especially when starting a fitness journey, is they try to implement all of these healthy habits right out of the gates, which they don't have implemented. Like, for example, if someone comes into me and they want to make a big lifestyle transformation and they're currently not working out, they're currently not aware of their nutrition and they have to poor sleep habits. Like if we go in there and start training six days a week, put them on a strict meal plan and get them in bed at 10, they would literally blow up. Because <laughs> it's just like, you can't, like, the body doesn't build habits that way. You have to pick and choose. So, like, for nutrition, let's say, for example, let's say you're someone who eats out a lot. Maybe a good starting point would be to, why don't we, you know, no eating out from Monday to Friday. You have to have all your home cooked meals from Monday to Friday. You know, and that's something that's going to be doable. You know, maybe if, if that's too much, then maybe we have to really say, where are we eating out? So, no fast foods only restaurants where you can order salads or, you know, whatever. So you have to make your goals and habits that you're trying to build very realistic. Because if you try to do something that's not realistic and crazy and extreme, you're not going to be able to last. And I saw so many people through this keto trend, jump on keto for like two to three weeks to lose 10 pounds and get excited, but really understand that it's just water weight. And then start to understand that keto is a very intense, extreme way of eating. So, and then fold, you know? So it's like, you got to just be really intelligent about this and be more intuitive. I'm an intuitive eater. So I'm asking myself when I'm eating, how do I feel? Am I full? Am I satisfied? You know, I eat foods that don't make me feel good, right? So intuitive eating is a really great way to train. And I, I, I deal with a lot with nutrition too, Mabby. I'm more than just a booty, but like I, cause I, I do, I deal with a lot of emotional and binge eating because eating is a whole, you know, eating is something that we don't teach our youth. And it should be the most important thing because all of our mental health problems, all, all of our really things that we deal with in our life are due to not eating properly. Anyway, that's a whole segment on that. Absolutely. And you know what? I'm so happy you went into this because changing your, I call it making lifestyle changes. It's not just you're going to start yeah. working out and you're going to go hard forever. You're changing your lifestyle. So you're making slowly changes to the way you do things, the way you think about food, what you think about when you're hungry, you're making changes to how active you are. And it's in the perfect plan. It would be a very fast process where you do it from one day to another, but that's not how it works. You need to do it slowly. And that's why I tell my girls when they're getting ready for surgery, I want them to start making lifestyle changes six months to a year before their surgery. So by the time they get there, the results that they'll have are results that they're going to be able to maintain because they've already made the yeah. adjustments to their diet. They've already started working out They're, You know, it's not like it's going to kickstart them. But for some women, it does. For some women, it does take having plastic surgery and seeing yourself in the mirror and loving it and being like, OK, I'm never going to lose this. What do I have to do now? And a lot of women do do that who make lifestyle changes Hunter. after surgery. 100%. You know, I, I think it's a great thing to point out too, that when you're physically fit, your body is going to be operating at the highest level it can. And what I mean by that, it's going to heal fast. It's going to have great energy, right? So for example, when I was dealing with a lot of pre and postnatal, so like for a woman who was about to have a child, if you're, if you're going to have a child, man, get in the gym as much as you can. 
because a lot of women gain a lot of weight through pregnancy, right? And then when they have the kid, they have all that extra weight. Really, mm -hmm. the kid, like, like when you have a, when you're having a baby, technically speaking, you should go right back to what you were because the baby will be gone. And that's it. All that extra weight gain. And a lot of women, I hate to say it, I'm just going to call it like it is, you know, make excuses and gain a lot of weight through the pregnancy. And I get it because you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm not a woman. And I understand that there's a lot of hormonal swings that happen that promote cravings mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. Like, I, 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 could, I can only imagine what having pregnancy is like. However, what I am trying to say is if you are able to, in that time, get dedicated and build a really healthy lifestyle, once you have the baby, you're going to go right back to that way. And the same thing with the BBL in the sense, it's not like this buildup because you're just going to go get the surgery. But I will say that after the procedure is done, if you're going into it physically fit, you're going to heal a lot faster. You know, you're going to, you're, you're going to be able to train a lot quicker. I don't know what the recovery time is exactly, but if you go into it out of shape and you go into it not really feeling great, you know, then your body's going to take a lot of time to heal. And then at that point, you know, you just want to, you want to like, it's like, it's getting a head start. It's getting you know, a head start. And, and Absolutely. Feel, right. And like the thing is, it's like, you know, this is what I also ask too. It's like for a second, it's like, we're talking about being physically active and eating healthy. Like those are just two things that like people, let's go. Like, what do we like? I mean, dude, you have life. <sighs> like life is like, like life is so precious, right? It's so precious. Let me tell like, you something. Don't think it, Hold on. Yeah. Let me tell you something. I 100% agree. And I feel like I've been on the other side. Where I'm like, yeah. it's so like it's I felt would feel so lazy to get up and get ready to go work out. My day was so busy with work. I would get home. I have kids. I have to cook dinner. I have to do homework. I have to do this. I have to do that. And I just would say I just don't have time. Now I've been able to make more time because my schedule has changed. But a lot of women don't have the time. So what are some exercises, some booty building, waist thinning exercises they yeah. can do at home? Like, for example, I can get away from my kids and put them in another room for 45 minutes, but I can't leave my house and go to the gym. Yeah. And you know what? And I'm going to tell you that. And I think one, one more point on that, because you brought up a really good point, is just like priorities. And Mavi, my big life mission, like this is the biggest life mission. And I said this at the start is to get people, the number one thing that you need to do if you want to live a very enriched, high vibrational life is you have to take care of yourself first. So it doesn't matter about the job. It doesn't matter about the relationships. It doesn't matter like, like even the kids. Like, and I know even for like everything is secondary to your well-being. Why do people get plastic surgery? To improve their confidence. How you improve your confidence is to keep your promises that you make with yourself. And it's by treating yourself with a lot of love, by taking care of yourself, by working out, by eating healthy, by meditation, by going for walks, connecting with nature, doing things that are going to enhance your self-esteem, your self-confidence. Because once you take care of yourself, once you love yourself, then you will love everyone else so much more, right? That's the thing is people neglect their own needs. And put everyone else's before theirs. And then like, you know, you can't give love if you don't have love. So self-love is numero uno. And that is why it's so, so important that you take the time and make it a priority, even if it's for 10 or 15 minutes to do something for yourself in terms of your physical, mental, and emotional needs. But I know that a lot of people are busy. And I know, for example, if you do have children, because I've had the privilege of like being around kids and I know how much work and beautiful work it is. But it's all about really just like time management because you don't need a lot of time and home workouts are a great thing to do. Just getting a, an easy set, like a five to 10 to 15 to 20 pound dumbbells, the ankle weights, the booty straps, booty bands. You can have a great home booty workout, you know, in 10 to 15 minutes. If you actually head over to my YouTube channel, my YouTube channel, I'm dedicating it now to home booty workouts. If it's no equipment, if it's dumbbells or bands, Stay tuned because there's going to be a lot of great material on there for easy 5, 10 to 15 minute home booty workouts. That's perfect. But yeah. I mean, I think at the end of the day, it's, you know. Hey, wait, uh, before know, we, the, wait, wait, wait. Tell us the YouTube channel name. It's just Nunzi. Everything is Nunzi. N-U-N-Z, or you guys say Z. So N-U-N-Z-Z-I-I-I, -I -I, three I's. Kind of uh, an interesting name. Nunzi. It's, it's, it's always been my nickname. My last name is Nunziata, so I'm Italian. Oh, and, uh, okay. Anyway, 
Yeah, oh, that's cool. So, okay, so run over to the YouTube channel and you'll see. Some yeah, check out Nancy home on YouTube. booty workouts. We got the booty booty popping on the in the home workouts, but uh, yeah, I mean, like I said, there's there's doing a lot of the glute isolation work you can easily do at home. When it comes to that core exercises, so this is actually interesting and a great point to bring up here. When it comes to your core, your your core is very 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 important to having a big booty. I cannot stress that enough. You can have a 30 inch booty and it look really big if you have a small enough waist. Like the mm-hmm. keeping the waist small is imperative because, and this is for men as well. Like it doesn't matter. Like if you have a small waist, your chest and back will look bigger. If you have a small waist, your booty and legs will look bigger. So like everything, like you might have a 47 inch peach, but if you have like a 40, you know, two inch waist, I mean, Mm-hmm. Like that's not, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So it's mm-hmm. like, you got to, the, you know, the waist size is very important. Now, obviously your waist size is going to really be due to your nutrition, you know, because like most people store body fat in their midsections, actually women typically, now it's all genetically different. Typically women store body fat in their thighs and then their booties and then in their arms. That's more of a men just tend to store that more in the in the stomach area as well as like the face, you know. But that's all genetics. But what I, but basically when you're training your core, there's two fundamental things to think about. There's the rectus abdominis, which is the actual six pack muscle. That's that like you know the the six pack that you see. Now, if you want a small waist, you actually don't need to necessarily focus on the rectus as much as the transverse abdominis, which is going to be used to keep waist small. So if you actually are looking at keeping the waist small, it's things like the ab vacuum, planking, side planking, anything that's going to force your stomach. Like, like right now, just suck your stomach in. Like just try to like suck your belly button into your spine right now and just hold it. Doing that? Yeah, I'm doing it. And just hold it. Like see like, so I walk around every day, especially if I'm doing photo shoots, like if I'm on, like I got to just hold my core in as much as I can, you know, but that's training the muscle to keep your waist tight. So by doing actually things like sit-ups and leg raises, those are important and I highly suggest you do them, but you got to make sure that you're keeping your abs sucked in and you're not pushing your abs out. A lot of people don't actually train core correctly because they're pushing their abs out as they're training them. So you're you're built like you want to keep everything tight. Oh yeah. That's why you have to put, that's why you put your fingers right here, right? When you're doing a sit-up, make sure you're keeping it. Yeah. Make sure. Well, basically the best, the best way, what I do, like the best mental cue that I use is belly button and spine. So I'm always just trying to think, I'm always just visualizing, like bringing my belly button closer to my spine. And that's just like for me, and that's when I'm, if I'm doing crunches, if I'm doing leg raises, like, you know, that's what I'm focused on is belly button and spine. Beautiful. Hey, tell us before we jump off, what are some of the best leg workouts? For, best for leg like workouts. nice, like nice toned legs, not yeah. super muscular. Just yeah, like, yeah, very toned. Yeah, no, hundred percent. I love training the legs. I think legs are so beautiful on a man or a woman. And uh, the thing is, is all the leg exercises are important. They all serve a purpose. I think though, if you want to have beautiful legs, I really suggest isolated like movements. So like lunging and single leg deadlifting and like single leg hip lifting. Like when you do compound, when you squat, for example. I guarantee you that you are not even consciously aware of it, but you are pushing and engaging more with one side. So maybe your right side dominant, maybe you push more with your right side. And that those imbalances will happen over time. I rarely squat or deadlift. I, I am always lunging. Lunging is such a great exercise for the booty. The Bulgarian split squat is another form of a lunge where your foot's elevated, the back foot's elevated. The single leg deadlift is one of the best. The hip lift is one of the best. Like, I mean, we're talking pancakes to peaches here, you know, with understanding how to do it correctly. But I think that overall training in a four to six set range and then keeping the reps at least 15 plus, I am not a low rep guy. I think that the higher reps, the better, a lot more blood flow. Good. That was one of my questions. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. High reps. Like I'll do like on the cable kickouts and stuff, 50 rep sets. Okay, good to know. Yeah, just because, like I said, we just could, I mean, what a great chat this has been. I know I this has been amazing. You know, I know my girls are going to be so happy. 
we go back to, I think, earlier on in the conversation about how the number one priority is when you're training muscles is that you have to have that tension. You have to have that activation. And what happens is when you go heavy, like too heavy, you lose that because your body is trying to help itself out by overcompensating with other muscles. And that is like the biggest thing I've seen wrong, man. And, you know, I go to the gym every single day and I go to the gym and I see people working out and just lifting way too heavy and they're not activating the muscles, right? And then anything, they're putting themselves at risk for injury. So, you know, it's like, don't, you know, leave the ego at the door. Just leave the ego at home all around in your life. But anyway, it's like one of those things where it's just like, learn how to engage your glutes, engage the muscle, do a lot of isolated work, high reps, feel the burn, like feel the burn in the booty. You know, there's, there's no better feeling in the world, Navi, than a booty burn. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that, that's what I live for. <laughs> I love it. Okay. So for our Ooh. girls who want to go do some of your yeah. booty workouts, how can they find you? Yeah. Okay. So I would say check out. So the main three are the Instagram, the TikTok and the YouTube. It's all Nunzi, right? So N-U-N-Z-Z-I-I-I. But basically, it's like the TikTok is going to have a lot of great short, quick material. So if you just want some inspiration for, you know, a workout in the gym, some home workouts, you know, you'll get the 15 to 30 second reels. There's also a lot of like little breakdowns on there. However, the YouTube is going to have the longer based content where you can actually do the workouts with me. I do also vlogging in the gym. So I vlog different booty days, you know, so the, you know, obviously there's a big difference between training in the gym, between training at home. So depending on the, you know, the person, there's both best of both worlds on there. And I'm going to be coming out with a lot more booty based content on the YouTube. So that's what I'm dedicating it towards. You know, I have, I'm really proud of it. I, it's a really fair price too. It's like a great deal. It's like, dude, it's 14 uh, 99, but basically I have a booty training app. So I've had it for about a year and a half. I'm really proud of it because it basically has all of my booty workouts and I'm constantly adding to the app. So it's a subscription base. You know, you sign up for one, three, six months to a year. And uh, yeah, you get access to right now. I think there's six 12 week programs. There's like eight standalone workouts and I'm constantly adding workouts to them. So I'm like home, body weight, gym workouts, dumbbell workouts, kettlebell workouts, like booty, booty mania, man, booty training mania. So it's like, cool man so that's beautiful that's, yeah so you can get that that's in any of my in my bios yeah i think i think i'll give you my link uh my my website or whatever yeah so you have access to that we'll put, and we'll then put and then website. i'm also working on the i'm working on the booty the booty bible man so <laughs> you know that <laughs> that'll be coming out hopefully soon but i'm excited about that because that's going to go into you know the best exercises how to eat for a booty you know how to activate it right so more of like a manual than that actual you know, work out. So. When you come out with that, you have to come back on the show and give us a discount code and give us a coupon code. Oh, dude, I'm just going to, everyone that gets a, a BBL procedure from uh, you guys will get a free copy. What? <laughs> Y'all heard it here. <laughs> Y'all go. heard it here. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for That's coming it. on the show. I'm so happy. I think we got so many good answers to my yeah. questions. And I think this is a good yeah. start. When you come out with the Booty Bible, we'll be on board with that too. And I will see you guys next week. Thanks, Thank Lindsay. Thank you, Valerie. It was a pleasure. Take care. I would like to end this episode with a huge thank you to all of our listeners. If you enjoyed this podcast, make sure to subscribe to Big Butts No Lies Podcast and follow us on Instagram at Big Butts No Lies Podcast. If you have a topic you want me to cover, please send it to the DM. If you know anyone on their plastic surgery journey, be sure to recommend them the show. You can also visit us on our website, bigbuttsnolies.com. You'll see the online surgical recovery store. We're adding new items all the time. If there's something you think I need to have on there, send me a DM. <laughs> don't forget to leave us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts. And don't forget, new episodes every Monday. I'll see you then.